is Kenneth Nicholas O'Keefe. He is the founder of the Universal Kinship Society and is taking his anti-war protest on the road. O'Keefe is hoping to line up volunteers to be human shields in Iraq, and he joins us now live from London to talk about it. Mr. O'Keefe, thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. My first question, why? You are a former U.S. Marine. You took part in the first Gulf War. Why? Well, my reason why really is based on the uh, couple of announcements the United States made Matt, last month. Specifically, they announced that the killing of uh, the six individuals in Yemen with the CIA Hellfire missile was not only legal but constitutional, including the killing of a U.S. citizen. And the next day, the U.S. reiterated its policy that its willingness to use massive retaliation, including nuclear weapons, against non-nuclear states, which to me I find is absolutely unacceptable and the greatest threat to the safety and security of the world that we live in right now. You, you, so uh, I think going to Iraq is important. Yeah, you uh, obviously realize that uh, uh, in the last war, Saddam Hussein had human shields, Westerners. Uh, it didn't stop any action that uh, took place, and uh, you don't really expect any action should the U.S. and Britain go ahead to uh, be halted because you're there. Actually, uh, I fully do. In fact, I understand that we the people have the power to take back our governments and have them truly represent our interests. We are going to be down there in the hundreds at the least, if not thousands, and I have called for a massive migration to Iraq, and the response that I'm getting is incredible. Nothing short of a miracle, and I would be amazed if we have less than thousands, and I wouldn't be surprised if we have tens of thousands of people who will migrate down to that area, and we can stop this war. Mr. O'Keefe, I want to ask you about something that we're seeing on your face. Uh, we see a tattoo, a tear tattoo. Can you tell us uh, what it is and, and why do you have it? Well, the tear is a reflection of the sorrow that I feel for all the ridiculousness that I see my human brothers and sisters involved in. I do not consider the situation that we live in in this world as necessary. I find it tragic that we decide to kill each other and live under such delusional reality that we perpetuate war and injustice against people all around the world. And it makes me very sad, but it also makes me angry and it makes me want to see a better world. Tell me, I'm curious whether it was your uh, uh, military experience in the Gulf War that uh, made you feel this way about this conflict or whether uh, you were all already feeling that way? It's part of who I am today. It certainly had a, a tremendous impact on me. Um, but it's not the only reason why. But the main thing that the Marine Corps taught me once I had my freedom taken away from me, which I gave up, uh, which was my own fault, I vowed that I would never give up my freedom again. And I wish that more people, especially in the West, who could exercise their freedom, would exercise their freedom and exercise their humanity and stand with the victims of our own nations. Because if we do do this, we can stop these wars. We can make a better world. And certainly bombing people is not going to make the world a better place. And it's not going to end so-called terrorism. But Mr. O'Keefe, some would say you're playing into Saddam Hussein's hands, that he, he, according to British and American officials, they say they have proved that he has weapons of mass destruction. He has used weapons of mass destruction against his own people. What do you say to these people? I think it's laughable that I would be accused of playing into Saddam's hands. The fact is, and I'm sure you well know this, the U.S. and Britain supplied Saddam Hussein with his biological and chemical weapons. And when he used them on his own people, the U.S. and Britain did nothing about it. In fact, they continued their relationship with him as a favored trading partner, and they supplied him with economic and military support after his worst crimes. So I think it's laughable that we would be equated with supporting Saddam Hussein when, in fact, it's our governments that supplied him with all the means to do all of his crimes, and yet now we're the ones supporting Saddam. You, you, you have, uh, as you have uh, expressed, a confidence that uh, your presence there and the presence of those who go with you will still the hand of, of the West, as it were, when it comes to pulling the trigger, were that to happen. But the reality is you could die. Are you prepared to accept that? I'm more fearful of not living my life and exercising my humanity than I am dying. And I would rather live a long life. And if I have a choice, I will but not at the expense of watching the world that I love and people that I love around the world being destroyed before my eyes. So if it's necessary for me to die for what I believe in, then so be it. But I would like to see a better world, a sane world, where everybody had the same opportunities that I had. And for that, I will give the United States some credit. And I'd like to make it clear to the American people that it is not my gripe with you. I very much want the best for America. And believe it or not, for those of you who would think that I'm doing this as a, a means of anti-Americanism, that's, exactly that's exactly untrue. 
I very much love America and want the best for it. All right, uh, got to leave it there. Kenneth Nichols, Nicholas.